Good morning, everyone. We are the group nine, and we will discuss Luna and Hidalgo's work. The name, Lu the name Juan Luna and Perex Rishon Hidalgo must have been familiar to each one of us who encountered them in history books and historical texts. From our elementary as well as high, as well high school years, both Luna and Hidalgo are considered as one of the pillars of the Philippine histories. They are known to be among greatest Filipino painters who have lived in the fight of honor of the Filipino people in the international arena. They were both part and, and member of the Indian Prabos together with our national hero, Dr. Zarizal and other classmates. They were a group of students during a Spanish colonization who was the privilege and opportunity to say to Europe to further study. Who is Juan Luna? Juan Luna was born in October 23, 1857 in Batok, Ilocos, Philippines. The reference is Don Juan Luna de San Pedro y Posadas in Doña Lorena Nubillo y Acheta. He was third of the seven children. Inter interest and passion for arts was instigated in in by brother Manuel Luna. Juan began attending the Ateneo de Manila where the, where they received his Bachelor of Arts degree and later went on, the, on to enroll himself at the Escuela Nautica de Manila and became a sailor and take lessons from the notable and influenced painting instruction Lorenzo Guerrero, Academia de Dibujo y Pintura under Spanish artist Agustin Saiz. And in, and in 1877, Juan decided travel in Europe which the brother Manuel were the one with the one complete his training and education in the art capital of Europe. He enrolled himself at the Escuela de Bel Belas Artes de San Fernando. Achievements and works. When first made your artistic achievements came in 1881, the death of Cleopatra Winu, which won silver medal at the Exposition National de Beltas Artes. In 1842 Australian gold medal, the Exposition of National de Beltas Artists. In, in 1887, Battle of Le, Lepanto. And his other work are Mistisa Lady in her dresser, dresser, Tampuan, Roman Ladies, The Happy Beauty, and The Blind Sleep. Despite his com commercial success and great talent, one sleeve has its dark side as well. He is married to Maria de la Paz Pardo de Tabera, a sister of his friend Felix Trinidad Pardo de Vera. Tra his travel in, in Europe but stay in Paris. They have a, they have a son Andres. On September 23, 1882, the majority is his mother-in-law because of jealousy and other affair with Monsieur Dussault. He, he got arrested but secured the in February 8, 1893 on grounds of temporary ins insanity. They matured to Manila, but on September 16, 1896, he and his brother Antonio Lula were arrested by the Spanish authorities and accused of organizing a revolution together with Katipunan secret societies. Got a pardon on May 27, 1897 and go back to Madrid after that he has done some works part of the revolutionary government and on December 7, 1899, he led you to heart attack. Upon hearing, upon hearing his brothers, the nation of soldier loyal to General Emilio Aguinaldo at the age of 42. Who is Felix Resurson Hidalgo? Felix was born on Felix was born on February 21, 1852 in Binando, Manila. Third of the seven children. Reference is Eduardo Rodriguez Hidalgo, lawyer and landowner, Ada Maria Barbara Padilla, its businesswoman. It was 
speculated, speculated that his mother youth include him from home. In 1871, Bachelor of Philosophy, University of Santo Tomas in Manila. He pursued a low degree due to parental pressure, but he was unsuccessful. Father Sabato gave his, his first lesson in drawing and encouraged him, encouraged him to focus on his artistic talent. Felix is moved to Europe to continue his study, study in arts. From, from 1879 to 1881, he studied painting on a scholarship founded by the Spanish government at the Real Acad Academia and Beltas Artes de San Fernando, Madrid. Simultaneously, enrolled un under Spanish mother painter Don Agustin Saez in the Escuela de Vivia y Pintura. The, ter the term of the scholarship required this skewed several life size classes for the Spanish. Spanish colonial government, but fortunately some of the which, which were destroyed in World War II. Achievements and work in 1971, second place is the cover design. Context of Laura de Manila ranking, only when his school director and much more experienced artists as won first place. In 1879, he went to Rome under scholarship to paint several portraits, including Senator Romano in Valencia. Hidalgo came throughout Spain in 1883 to practice painting landscape and then moved to Paris in 1884. In 1884, he was he was win silver medal in Exposition National de Beltas Artes together with Juan Luna, which is painting Via Mes Cristianas Expastas al Populacho. After the Hidalgo also won other protection awards around the around the world. Hidalgo spent more time painting abroad. Maybe 30 years in total than we did living in the Philippines, he enjoyed living the quiet life in Paris, devoting his life to art and working from his studio, which became a good for Filipino artists, revolutionary, ultra financial, and his artists in, in the city. Hidalgo the Paris was stream productive during his time there to help support his career. Hidalgo even worked as the correspondent for the in Pidencia and news, newspaper published in Manila by a revolutionary general. One year before his death, he traveled to Asia, part of Eastern Europe. He began his trip with a six month visit to the post revolutionary Philippines to see his sick mother and other relatives who he had been a part of nearly three, 30 years. While in Manila, he completed several landscapes of, of, of his homeland. But it's a short while to travel back to Paris Trans Siberian Railway in Japan. However, he built several in, in Russia. It was near dead to my time released his belong Paris. He journey into Spain, he hoped for recovery but died at the age of 53. Near, near in Barcelona in 1913, Hidalgo was honored by the Philippines. That's that same years in stress named after his in Quiapo, Manila. Hidalgo stress was regarded as the most beautiful stress in Manila during the, the late 19th century. He even were returned to the Philippines by a prince for final burial at the family museum in Manila. Sporio. The Esporium is painting by Filipino painter Juan Luna. The painting was submitted by Juan Luna to the Exposition Nacional de Bellas Artes in 1884 in Madrid, where it gained the first gold medal out of three. Juan Luna gained in great popular popularity among the Filipino because of because of this painting. The painting is variable oil and canvas which is color to each red being the central color that attract the most attention I'd standing as at four point twenty two meters in height and seven 1675 meter in which it 
is the largest painting in the Philippines so far. The painting The painting figure gives a Roman history center on the blood games brought in Gladiador Maches Spor Sporium is the Latin word referring to the basement of the Roman Closium where the fallen and dying Gladiador Adam and the void of the holding position. The Sporium is complete and even during the Roman the Roman Empire bodies blooded bodies and of gladiator who were though as slaves are dra dragged dragged mer mercilessly away by me from the wide and powerful arena towards and no darkness and where other tragically killed the gladiator are brought on the left inspection and identify away their chance to skip of the contents of their metal helmet and the among in contact with the change emotion figure of the left and the right side meanwhile a present and other mood and old man carries to touch Perhaps searching to his son while a woman weeps the dead of her loved one. The painting show is traffic event by is also show the deeper meaning especially of the Filipinos during the time of the Spanish colonization according to some art expert the fallen gladiator who are being drenched in the painting are the Filipino people while the while the men dragging them are the representative of the Spanish role it is it is believed that the woman crouched on the right side of the painting is the mother mother country of the Inang Bayan who weeps the Philippines the blood thirsty grow in the left represent social cancer in that time truly there is there is the come to painting for you is currently hangs in the main gallery of the ground floor of the National Museum of the Fine Arts in the Manila. It is the first work of the art that great visitor upon entry into the museum. Ang esporium daw po ay pinapakita ng likhang ito ang isang madugong bahagi ng kasaysayan ng Romano. Ang labanan ng mga gladiador ang Sportium ay is, isang salitang Latina tumutukoy sa pinakailalim ng palapag ng konseho ng Romano. Romano ng kung saan dinadala ang mga namamatay at nanghihingalo pang gladiador. Dito rin sila hinuhubadan ng kanilang mga kagamitan. Ang nasa larawan naman po ay nasa sentro ng likhang ito ang mga nakahandusay na gladiador habang hinihila ng mga Romanong Romanong kawal sa kanilang sa kaliwa ng bahagi, bahagi makikita ang mga taong nagmamasid at naghihintay na kunin ang mga helmet at iba pang kagamitan panlaban ng mga gladiador. Kabaligtaran ang kaguluhan sa kaliwa isang tahimik at malungkot na larawan naman ang makikita sa bandang sa ban, bandang kanan.
Isang matandang lalaki na may dalang sulo na animong hinahanap ang kanyang anak habang isang babae naman ang nakahandusay at ina- iniiyakan ang kanyang namatay, namatay na minamahal. Portrait of Lady The painting of an untent work in the oil one Luna once intended past the Pardo de Tabera but which now goes by the ID portrait of Lady its picture of Lady before the time including a rosary in the there is prayer book and his Life stand to their left. Fourteens of Lady is a dreamy exp- expressionist trending of the woman, lounging in the bed surrounded by the softest wa- white sheet. Hello everyone, my name is Daryl Aaron M. Samson. My report is about the Parisian life. The Parisian life, also known as Interior Dion Cafe or Inside the Cafe, is an oil in canvas impressionist painting by Juan Luna in 1892. This is only the painting where Juan Luna himself is a character in the painting. The painting is 57 centimeter by 79 in dimension. Currently owned by the Government Service Insurance System or the GSIS. It's located at the National Museum of Fine Arts. It was exhibited by only once in World Fair Saints Louis Exposition in the United States and won a silver medal. Ariston Bautista Lin, one of the characters in the painting, was the original owner of the Parisian life. The GSIS Museum bought it at Christie's Auction House in Hong Kong at the price of $870,000 or around $45.4 million to $46 million pesos. After proc- procuring the painting, it was stored around the Philippines with the University of Santo Tomas Museum of Arts and Sciences as its last destination. Parisian life features an interior scene, interior scene in a cafe with a woman seated prominently on a banquet and three men at the far left corner, a well-known fact that the audience believe is the three men wearing black coats where Juan Luna facing forward in the center. Dr. Jose Rizal's half turned back and Ariston Bautista been sitting the closest to the lady who were on a voyage. One interpretation of the painting is formal and social anal- analysis, analysis revealing a woman believed to be a prostitute as the subject of the male gaze. Women in Paris were increasingly seen as a threat to the status quo. If they did not conform to the traditional role of a femme honnête or a respectable woman, they were the partition or the prostitute. As a dangerous woman, the prostitute bore the stigma of infecting men with venereal disease. And another one is inter- interpretation claims the lady as the mirror image of the Philippine archipelago or our motherland. The motherland is awkwardly poised, disturbed with the blank stare, unsure whether to stand up or remain seated. With this contention, it in- integrates cohesively other elements in the painting. The three heroes are discussing the disturbed state of the motherland in 1892. It is like soccer when La Liga Filipina was formed, July 3, when the Katipuna was formed in July 7, and when Jose Rizal was banished to exile in the Pitan on July 7. The year 1892 was the eve of the Philippine Revolution. The newspaper, Lego de Paris, is folded behind the lady. The newspaper signifies the cry of Bastille or French Revolution, inspiration of the Philippine Revolution, the French aspiration of the liberty, fraternity, and equality, were identical to the longings of the Filipinos. Thus, the French Revolution, the echo of Paris, figures clearly behind the third state of the Philippines, motherland in 1892. Major works of Las Virgenes, Cristianas, Expertas, Al Populacho. Las Virgenes Cristianas Expuestas al Populacho or the Christian Virgins Exposed to the Populace. It's a famous 1884 history painting by Filipino painter namely Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. The oil and canvas painting measuring is 1.15 meters by 1.57 meters. 
It won a silver medal during 1884 Exposition General de Belgas Artists in Madrid, Spain. As one of the national treasures of the Philippines, a copy of the painting is part of the art collection of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. The original was destroyed in at the University of Valladolid in Spain. Since 2015, the painting is currently on a five-year loan to the National Gallery Singapore as part of the Southeast Asian Art Galleries. It is a landmark painting despite depicting the persecution of Christians in ancient Rome, described as a masterpiece remarkable in the aspects of quality, composition, and historical context. If were traced to Santily clothed Christian females, they being mocked by a group of boorish Roman male on lures. One of the women is posited naked at the foreground of the painting with the with her head bowed in misery. The seminal women have been stripped not only of their garments but also of their dignity. The unfortunate women in the artwork are considered by some indigenous Filipino as virgins, being led out, stolen from, and ridiculed. The women are young virgins concerned by a mob of sexually hungry. Roman men. One of the men has his hand over on one semi-naked female whose eyes are looking up to heaven asking and begging for help that never comes. Connecting the plight of the Filipinas under the bondage of the Spanish church and the state, according to Graciano Lopez Hainas toast to the artwork. Hidalgo ingeniously depicted the helplessness of the Christian woman with their conviction as their only weapon against the atrocities of those who wish to snap up the movement. El asesinato del gobernador Dora Bustamante. It's a painting of Hidalgo that throws the violence of Bustamante. It is an old canvas measuring 412 centimeter or 13.5 feet in height and 338 or 11 feet in width. It won a gold medal in its first exhibit 1905 at the St. Louis Exposition in the United States of America. Don Antonio Ma Regidor, a Filipino nationalist who commissioned the painting, never took hold of it and remained the Barcelona until 1914, when the painting was brought back to the Philippines by one of his relatives. 1965 is when the painting came into the possession of Mr. Manuel Lazatin Garcia. In 1971, it was transferred to the resident, residence of architect Leandro Loxon for safekeeping. The painting, the painting was unveiled. In 1974 at the National Museum, time of the celebration of Museum Week, and it was declared a national cultural treasure. Bustamante assumed office of August 9, 1717, and among his first acts was an inspection of the loyal treasury. He found out about the corruption and ordered the arrest of some officials and members of the religious corporations. Archbishop Francisco de la Cuesta refused to yield those hiding in the church he, he too was arrested. The priors led by Sebastian de Totanes, the Franciscan prior, marched to the palace and led a fanatic mob in assassinating the governor and his son who came to his aid. Archbishop de la Cuesta thereafter became the governor general and interim. Hidalgo captured this drama on canvas, but for obvious reasons, his work was not public, publicly exhibit, exhibited. The Lopez Museum keeps several studies of this painting, including the final study in oil on wood, but the original is reported to be in the possession of former fiscal Guillermo B. Guevara. Ito, ito po yung story nung do sa may painting niya. Fernando General Fernando Manuel de Bustillo Bustamante y Rueda. Ang liberal na gobernador ng Pilipinas at field marshal ng Imperyong Espanyol mula 1717 hanggang 1719. Kain sa mga tala ng mga fraile, ang, ang mga fraile ang nanguna, nanguna sa krimen na ito. Paano nangyari ang krimen na ng Espanyol sa Pilipinas? Ginamit nila ang katolisismo bilang ideological state apparatus upang itanim sa puso ng mga tao ang pagsunod sa Espanya. Walang separation of church and states noon. Ngunit isa sa mga pinunong sibil ang nagpasaway. Patuloy na pinaresto ng liberal na gobernador general na si Bustamante ang mga may utang sa gobyerno kahit sila ay humihingi ng sanctuario. Sanctuario sa simbahan. Itinuturing itong pang pangbabasto sa simbahan ng mga obispo. Kaya sinab sinabihan nila si Bustamante, ipapa-excommunicate ka namin. 
ang mga obispo ang pinakulong kabilang na ang mga arsobispo arsobispo ng Maynila Francisco de la Cruz Francisco de la Cruz kaya ang mga paring Agustino Dominicano Franciscano at Recoleto ay ay nagpalak October 11, 1719 nagtipon ang mga pari kasama ang kanilang mga kabig mula sa simbahan ng San Agustin at nagmarch sa patungong Palacio del Gobernador sa loob ng Intramuros. Hindi sila napigilan ng mga bantay ayon sa mga tradisyonal na tala. Sinugod ng mga pari at ng bala na ang ikalawang palapag. Dinampot ang Gobernador General tinalagkad at pinasasaksak hanggang mamatay. Dumating ang kanyang anak upang iligtas siya, ngunit ang anak niya rin ay napatay. Dalawang asasinasyon ang nangyari matapos doon ay nagmarcha sila patungong Fort Santiago. Pinalaya ang mga obispo at sobispo at ang arsobispo ng Maynila at ginawang interim gobernador general sa loob ng isang linggo. Ang version na ito ay lalong na-reinforce dahil sa isa sa pinakasikat na moral ni Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, Ida, Hidalgo isang bayaning pintor ng ating bansa nung panahon ng propaganda. La Barca de Aqueronte. La Barca de Aqueronte, The Boat of Charon, is about Hidalgo flexing some serious neoclassical muscles with its mythological theme in the year 1887. It is his most awarded work of art, a silver medal at the 1889 Paris Exposition, a diploma of honor from the 1891 Exposition Exposition General de Velas Artes in Barcelona, a gold medal prize at the 1893 Madrid Exposition, eh, sorry, Exposition International de Velas Artes. La Barca de Acolonte is an oil painting inspired by this reading of Dante's Inferno during his trip to Italy. It is Hidalgo's interpretation of damned souls journeying across the river hindi ko alam kung tama kung babasahin ko siya. At Charon toward the gates of Hell of Hades. Charon, who, who is classical myth mythologist, ferryman of the dead, is evidently the main protagonist of the painting. Charon is seen on the right edge of the boat, dirty, dirty old cloak weeping behind him as, the, as he glares at the stream of nude figures that represent condemned souls to cascade down his boat with his angled slightly crouch position. His figure, his figure almost seems impatient to depart. Next na po. Hidalgo created many versions of studies of La Barca de Aqueronte before creating his final life-size work which was bought by the King of Spain for 7,500 pesetas. Helplessness and struggle is featured in the painting. It also echo, echoes the hardships that the Filipino were experiencing at the time during the Spanish regime. However, even more to, the, to that is how the story of helplessness and suffering and journeying through hell can still be applied to the context of the Philippines today. Suffering is something they still go through that people in poverty who seems to be deprived of opportunities improve their quality of life. In conclusion, it can be noted that Felix Hidalgo and Juan Luna became the first Filipino painters to gain international recognition during the 19th century. But we can also note that they were not exactly Filipino painters in the strict sense, for their works, in content and in style, reflected European and Western influences. However, their artistic prominence among his Western colleges still provided and ignited support to the cost of the Philippine propaganda movement. They were among the artists who proved Indios are also capable of producing masterpieces. Los Indios Bravos were not Filipino elitists who roamed the great cities of Europe. They were silent soldiers who used the art as their pistol just as how Rizal used his nobles to unmask the trouble of the Filipinos under the colonial government, Luna and Hidalgo also proved that a series of brushstrokes can itself be revolutionary.